clearly, if we if we can see the scalp, um, there's going to be a degree of miniaturization. And, you know, it's good that he got on treatment. So let's see what comes next in the third picture of the camera roll. And wow, look at that. <laughs> you know, no, no, no time wasted. Just right to the results. And wow, just day and As night. you can see over here, look at his forehead, right? Or a bit above his eyebrow area. This is a sort of hypertrichosis. Hey guys, before we continue this video, I would like to mention that we now have liposomal monoxidal sulfate on my website, phologens.com, F-O-L-L-I-G-E-N-Z.com, and if the order queue is available and open, you can order it there. We're running it as a cosmetic. There are other sort of botanicals inside of this particular topical that are pretty helpful when it comes to conditioning the hair. So that's at phologens.com, F-O-L-L-I-G-E-N-Z.com. That's F-O-L-L-I-G-E-N-Z dot com. Go check it out and maybe even try it out. See you there. Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another hair progress review video. And we're back on the Tressless subreddit and we're looking at this particular user by the name of GoodFunction4162. Title of the post is, quote, my Finn and Min journey so far, one year progress, unquote. So let's read the description of his post. The user writes, quote, back in September of 2024, I started noticing bad hair thinning and shedding. It kept getting worse until December. I went to a dermatologist and he told me that it was androgenetic alopecia. He didn't prescribe me anything and basically told me to just live with it, unquote. I just want to cut in here real quick. That is so regrettable. <laughs> Some doctors, they just don't take your cosmetic concerns as being legitimate concerns. And we know through many studies that androgenetic alopecia can elicit mental, you know, fatigue, I guess you can say. It can cause stress. It can create body dysmorphic disorder. I think there was a particular study that said that those dealing with hair loss out of all other dermatological conditions, those dealing with hair loss had a higher rate of body dysmorphic disorder and that study was comparing it against other people with conditions so imagine that rate against the general population of people that don't typically have hair loss or cosmetic or dermatological conditions so just to have a doctor tell you yeah just live with it get over it you know it's it's very regrettable but let's keep reading. Quote, at the start of 2025 after doing a lot of research I began using minoxidil and finasteride but I started worrying about side effects. Right now, I've settled 2.5 milligram finasteride daily, stopped applying topical minoxidil, instead started drinking six drops mixed with a cup of water, unquote. There are people right now who are drinking topical minoxidil, and guys, don't drink topical minoxidil. Don't do that little six drops ratio or whatever. Don't do that. It's very easy to fuck up. Maybe you might get a bit more than you bargain. I don't think it's safe. I wouldn't do that. I think it's wiser to just get oral minoxidil and just cut it up into, you know, smaller bits. This is just laziness. But unless you can't find oral minoxidil, I can understand why you would do this, but I wouldn't recommend doing. But let's keep reading. Quote, after a few months, I actually started seeing results, not just in my hair, but also in my beard, eyelashes, and eyebrows and now after these results i'm wondering if i should reduce these doses or keep it the same unquote so what we know is that you have to keep up your stack if you're using oral minoxidil you have to keep using that specific amount of oral minoxidil so you can't go from five milligram to 0 0.5 milligram and expect to not lose results maybe you can get away with it if it's 2.5 milligram uh, that you were switching to after using five milligram, but don't be surprised if you start losing some, some ground because with minoxidil, the hair growth you get tends to be kind of dose dependent, especially from what we know about oral minoxidil. So yeah, let's have a look at this guy's hair. So as you can see, this is his baseline. He has some mid crown and midsection thinning. Um, it's a bit of a bad picture over here, but still we can see the scalp. We can see that some of the hairs seem to be miniaturized. Um, I say seem to, 
because maybe this could just be bad lighting. But clearly, if we if we can see the scalp, um, there's going to be a degree of miniaturization. Now, one thing that I find to be kind of common in some of these pictures that kind of have this sort of appearance is that some people are dealing with malassezia outbreak on their scalp. And as we know, that particular fungi causes seborrheic dermatitis and other sort of skin conditions. So if you're not treating that, then you're going to have an inflammatory issue on the scalp compounded with your androgenetic alopecia, and that's going to make your hair loss look even worse. So typically when I see people dealing with these two conditions, as soon as they solve a potential seborrheic dermatitis issue, within like three months or so, four months, they start to see some rapid hair growth. And that's not necessarily from the finasteride intervention, maybe partially. And maybe also the oral minoxidil or topical minoxidil intervention. But when you see those people making quick results, sometimes it has to do with them solving. Maybe they, they don't even know that they just solved a particular issue, but it has to do with them solving perhaps seborrheic dermatitis on their scalp. So let's go to the next picture. So, okay, we get a clearer look at his scalp. Let's see if I can see anything that sticks out to be like a seborrheic dermatitis issue. You can usually tell because there'll be like weird yellow blotches on the scalp, maybe white yellow crusts here and there. You guys probably can't see it, but I do see like some over here and a little bit over here, like a little white blotch. But to be honest, his scalp looks clean for the most part. So I can't necessarily say he's dealing with any seborrheic dermatitis issue. He just has the classical androgenetic alopecia case. So we can clearly see that his crown area and midsection is thinning a bit. And, you know, it's good that he got on treatment. So let's see what comes next in the third picture of the camera roll. And wow, look at that. <laughs> you know, no, no no time wasted, just right to the results. And wow, just day and night. I mean, granted, he is pulling his hair back in the crown and midsection here a bit. You can get this sort of look at all. And I keep saying this in these videos. You can get this sort of coverage, as we can see in this third picture in the camera roll, without having an increase in density. And that's surely what happened, right? He's not going to get that sort of look by you know styling his hair if he has this sort of issue as his baseline in that particular area so this is the impact of his what did he say he said he's taking 2.5 milligram finasteride now guys just to let you know and as another reminder anything past one milligram finasteride you're not going to get any additional results it's going to suppress the same amount of scalp dht and serum DHT. Now, perhaps with oral dutasteride, anything past 0 0.5 milligram up to 2.5 milligram, maybe a little bit past 2.5 milligram might give you uh, additional results, but you know that <laughs> that doesn't extend its sort of courtesy to finasteride. So one milligram a day or every other day is enough. Even 0 0.5 milligram a day or every other day is enough all the way down to 0 0.25 milligram a day or every other day is enough to help you if you have mild cases of androgenetic alopecia. But once you get past the 0 0.5 to 1 milligram mark of finasteride, you're not really going to get any, you know, any real difference, right? It's, a, it's more or less the same. But that's what he was doing. I don't understand his six drops of topical minoxidil because he doesn't mention what concentration of topical minoxidil he used. So, I mean, but six drops seems insignificant, but you have to deal with perhaps the minoxidil crystals from your previous use. If you're not cleaning your applicator, you could have a bit, a bit of like minoxidil crystals at the bottom of your, you know, of your dropper, right? And that can deposit itself as you drink it, which can be dangerous over time, right? You might end up taking a bit more than you realize. So you actually have to look at what you're doing and be aware. Um, oh, look at this. You know, this is another picture. He's clearly moving his, you know, his hair around just for us to get an idea of the density dis dispersal on his scalp. As you can see, he has some good coverage and some good regrowth. That was the, this is the fourth picture in the camera roll. Okay, so... Now we're looking at his eyebrows because he did make statements about his eyebrows and eyelashes, right? That 
when he started, he, you know, he didn't really have much. And as you can see, you know, he has eyebrows, he has eyelashes, but his bottom eyelashes aren't really well defined at all. And uh, his eyebrows are kind of like wispy a bit. And that doesn't mean he's dealing with any sort of condition. It could just be genetic, right? This is probably how he is at baseline. And then with the intervention, and I get it, I get it. Two different pictures, two different lighting conditions, but still, you can make the comparison in eyelash length and eyebrow length. As you can see over here, look at his forehead, right? Or a bit above his eyebrow area. This is a sort of hypertrichosis effect from the oral minoxidil that he's doing, or I guess he's drinking topical minoxidil or whatever, but it's the consumption of minoxidil that's leading to a hypertrichosis effect on his forehead and also his scalp hair and all the hair on his body. You can see his eyebrows have gained a tremendous amount of density, right? Um, to the point where they're kind of extending into his, you know, his forehead area a bit. And his eyelashes, I mean, look, look at his top eyelash, right? And his bottom eyelashes, right? So if you compare his bottom eyelashes, he didn't have any. <laughs> he had none, pretty much, and he barely had any on top. But over here, you can clearly see, again, you can clearly see the bottom eyelashes have been revitalized. Or maybe they aren't revitalized because they never were like that to begin with, but they've been amplified in their sort of state in their antigen state. So overall, if we're just looking at a scalp, right? Um, this guy had a really, really good improvement, obviously. And this is because of the intervention of suppressing scalp DHT, along with using minoxidil. Now, I wouldn't use like little droppers of liquid minoxidil into a cup and drink it. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do those little drop things. Um, Instead, just get oral minoxidil if you're hell-bent on consuming minoxidil. Or you can consider going to my startup company. So I started recently a company called Follygens at follygens.com. That's F-O-L-L-I-G-E-N-Z.com. You can check out our liposomal minoxidil sulfate. This is the active and currently we have the 10% concentration over here and the 5% concentration over here. Now, there have been some studies regarding minoxidil sulfate, particularly from Dr. Ralph Tureb, that showed it took non-responders to being responders, specifically at the 5% concentration. And there tends to be a sort of dose-dependent effect when it comes to minoxidil's use, even in the oral case. Give sulfogens minoxidil sulfate a try. This is liposomal minoxidil sulfate in a lipid matrix. And one of the most unique things about this is that there's no propylene glycol and no other drying alcohols. This is alcohol-free. This is propylene glycol-free. And we do use some botanicals from plants, but they're mostly filtered, so it's not really going to agitate your scalp. So yeah, try it out, you know, see how it works for you. And maybe you might have that sort of hyper responder effect. So go give it a try. I'll put that in the description below. But in any case, <laughs> that's a bit of a mid ad. I usually wait until the end, but I, ha I, had to do, I had to do the transition. But let's go back to his post over here. This user by the name of Don't Call Me Steve says, quote, you're worried about side effects and you take 2.5 milligram fin daily and you drink topical minoxidil, dude. <laughs> and then he goes on to say, uh, edit, the bottle of Rogaine says to call poison control if ingested. I'm not saying it will kill you, but holy shit, guys, if you're resorting to drinking a topical, hair loss is the least of your problems, unquote. Guys, hair loss really drives people up a wall. It makes them kind of lose their mind and do dangerous things and sometimes irrational things. So that's probably why. Another user says, quote, 2.5 milligram of finasteride and drinking Minox, bro. This shit worked awesomely for you, but what the F, unquote. Uh, another user says, quote, you were worried about side effects, so started drinking topical minoxidil. I guess, you know, I'm just filling it in. For real, bruh, that's just straight up dumb, unquote. Another user over here by the name of Exotic Document 4309 says, quote, six drops is too much. That is like 10 milligrams of minoxidil. I would lower it to three with time 
or you could have low blood pressure long term, unquote. I'm not sure how accurate that is, to be honest with you. Um, but maybe six drops. I mean, it could be. Yeah. Now that I'm kind of looking at it, six drops might be the equivalent of 10 milligrams of minoxidil. Now, you have to remember in a 5% concentration of minoxidil, every one milliliter has 50 milligrams of minoxidil. You know, you have to be careful not to overdose yourself by accident. And again, you could probably have a bit more than 10 milligrams in there if there is a sort of crystallization of those minoxidil salts inside of your pipette, right? So that could build up over time and you might fuck up and administer like 50 milligrams by accident. So don't do this risky shit. It's really not worth it. But in any case, if we look at his results, he grew his hair back. And he did some really good gains on his eyebrows and eyelashes. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and surely I hope to see you on the next one. Bye, and again, consider trying this liposomal minoxidil sulfate out. Another plug, I know, you're mad at me. You're, you're probably like, this guy's shilling. I have to shell out my own company, of course. But here it is. It's currently in stock. If it's not in stock at the time, you can possibly put your name on a waiting list. But yeah, see you guys later, and thanks for watching. Peace.